Barona, who will talk about project development and community metrics for fun and profit. Enjoy. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, good morning. Uh, first of all, I have to thank uh, my first speaker, my previous speaker, because he was telling you why getting metrics out of software uh, repositories and uh, for software projects is important. So I'm going to skip that part, and I'm uh, I'm, I'm going to enter into uh, a new way of thinking about. Uh, metrics, which is, well, you know, free software and open source software is about openness. You have the code out there. But in many cases, I think the code is not enough to know about the quality of the project, sustainability of the project, whichever. So the idea is that we have a lot of information out there about our projects. And uh, when we are developing, in fact, we are not developing in the open just because we like it, or of course we like it, but in addition we want others to come to the project and see what's happening in it. We want to be transparent and we want to give all the information to potential users, to potential developers. So in, in my opinion, what we are seeing here is that uh, when we are providing not only the data about the software, but the data about the, how the software has been developed, and that's basically metrics about how the software has been developed, we are entering a new, level, a new level of transparency. So instead of just show me the code, let's go to, okay, show me the development data. So show me how you are developing the code. So um, the talk is going to be, in fact, like two parts. The first one is going to be, okay, this is easy and you can do it for your GitHub project. So uh, let's go and see how you can mine your uh, pet GitHub project and get information out of it if you want. Because information is there, the only thing that you need is to visualize it. And second, I will try to show a couple of examples for different projects that we are analyzing where you can get some information that could be potentially interesting, and information which is not in the source code, but could be interesting for decision makers, for users, or for developers. Okay, first of all, this is the dashboard that I'm going to present. So all of this, of course, is free software, and uh, uh, it, we call it the Grimoire uh, Development Dashboard. Uh, you have information about the different repositories from a project, so here you have in the top area, you have information about Git, then you have information from tickets, and then you have information from mailing lists, for instance. You can have information from other sources as well. Uh, the idea is to, uh, so the, the Grimoire project is about uh, having a free software infrastructure for analyzing free software projects. So you know that there are some other services in the net that uh, basically analyze free software projects. You can go to Olo, you can go to GitHub Stats or some other places, but they are not free software. Uh, the idea is, okay, let's, let's run our own staff on this. So the idea from the technical point of view is, is easy. So let's go to the repositories, the information is there, so let's extract it. Then let's put it into a database. Once we have all the information into the database, we uh, run some analysis and some uh, pretty simple uh, uh, queries on the data and produce JSON files. And those JSON files are consumed by some JavaScript running on the browser and displace it. So that's it. So in, in principle, it's uh, quite simple. And uh, there are a couple of added benefits. So for instance, if you want to go directly to the database and do your, the queries yourself, of course you can. It's a standard MySQL database. You just go there, query anything, that's it. Um, if you know how to do uh, um, uh, JavaScript interfaces, you can do your own if you want. You, you have the JSON files, consume them, uh, and maybe uh, show the information in some other ways. Uh, if you have a repository which is not supported, it's, it's not that difficult. So uh, write uh, some code to retrieve the data from the repository, store it into the database, use the same format, and then the rest is uh, automatic. So you have to do nothing for visualization or for querying or for analysis. So the metrics grimoire tool, which is the first part, the part going to the repositories, is currently supporting some repositories. So for instance, we have CVS Anali, which is the tool, the part of metrics grimoire that goes to uh, uh, source code management repositories. Uh, and this tool knows how to deal with CVS version Git. Well, through Git, it can get most of the information from current repositories, for instance, Mercurial or Bazaar, as long as the information through Git uh, is good enough. So you know that in some cases you have some mingling of data and so on, but basically uh, for most uses it's good enough. So we could say that most usual repositories for source code management are supported. For uh, tickets, we use a, a tool called Bicho, and Bicho now is about Baxilla, Jira, GitHub, uh, Lura, Lunchpad, some others. Uh, Basically, most of them, you know, are those that we are using. 
it usually goes through the API when the uh, system is providing it. In some other cases, it, uh, it, it does some uh, HTML scrapping and things like that. And uh, Bitso is now also supporting so, um, uh, code review systems like Garrett. Uh, so the, the idea is that you can also get information out of the uh, code review process via Bitso. Then for mailing list, we have email stats that supports uh, uh, standard inbox files, but also can automatically go to Mailman or to Gmail and download the mailing list and analyze them and introduce them into the database. And then we have a couple of tools for wikis. This is only supporting uh, um, media wiki for now and uh, IRC analysis. So the idea of IRC analysis is pretty much simple. You need IRC logs and the idea is only to parse the logs. So IRC analysis supports like uh, two or three of the most common formats for I IRC logs. So basically all of this, get information from the repositories, put it into the database. Once you have it, this grimoire starts to work. So this grimoire is basically a uh, uh, Bisque more R, which is an R package. R, you know, is a statistical uh, system. Uh, so R package allows you to uh, query the database in a supposedly easier way. You can, of course, go directly to the database if you want, but you can also use the packets for getting some abstractions on, on top of it. Uh, you can also use Bisque more JSON, uh, sorry, Bisque more JavaScript, which is the visualization part that consumes the JSON files and that produces the, the charts and so on and Biscumar GS lib, which is in fact the library providing both the widgets to, uh, uh, to show and the uh, code to download the JSON files and convert it into, let's say, uh, metrics or abstractions that, you, that are easier to, to chart. So for producing a, a, a dashboard for, for GitHub, so assume that right now you have a laptop on top of you and you want to go to GitHub and um, uh, produce a dashboard for some project. So first of all, you need to have Python or MySQL installed. So the rest is pretty much any standard Linux distribution can do it. So first thing you have to do is to clone Bisgrimoire R and Bisgrimoire JSON. You don't have to clone a metrics grimoire because that's going to be a part of the process. So that's semi-automatic. So you clone both and then you run this command. So the first one on the top is basically running a simple script that is going to install the metrics grimoire tool and then you just configure your paths so that the tools run. Of course, you can install the tools by themselves, but okay, this way you just install everything. So this is going to install everything in t dot, uh, slash tmp slash mg. Once you have the tools installed, and this may take like five minutes, you go for this. This one is going to produce the JSON files and uh, set up a very basic dashboard. And for this, you run in fact, this is an example. You have more examples in this there for other systems, but you can just go to the GitHub directory and run this example, oh, sorry, this script with this parameters. Well, you can see the parameters are basically things like passwords for your uh, MySQL database, uh, user and password for GitHub, things like that. So you need the user and password for GitHub for getting details about tickets because otherwise the API don't allow you to, to do that. Um, this is going to, to, to analyze Biscumar slash Biscumar R project, which is uh, uh, the, the one doing the, the, the analysis, and uh, it's going to produce uh, the result in a slash temp slash temp. So once you have done that, you have a new directory slash temp slash temp where you have a clone of the uh, Git repository and uh, some JSON files in the dashboard directory. And there you also have the JavaScript needed for everything to run. So the only thing that you have to do is to export that directory uh, with a web server. You can do it with Python, you can do it with Apache if you want, whichever. And point your browser to localhost 8000. And what you get is this one. So this is for exactly for this project. And uh, here you have on, on the left, you have a, a very brief summary of, uh, of the project. And uh, and in, in, in the right, you have the, the charts and so on. So I'm going to skip the next part. It's, uh, it's better that you have a look at it. So this is for the, for the ticketing system. Again, you have some summary. You have some general charts and so on. So uh, you can also produce dashboards for all the projects for a user or for a, or an organization if you want. So yesterday I did it for Perl, Perl 6, for instance. 
So you go there, basically it's the same thing. The only thing is that you have to specify uh, around here is user. So that means that the name is not the name of a project, but the name of a user. And again, you export everything and you get the new dashboard with all the information, in this case for all the projects in the uh, uh, repositories. Uh, in the process, some interesting things happen too. Because um, uh, some databases were produced, so if you go to your MySQL, you are going to see some new databases that you can browse and check and query if you want. And also you have the uh, JSON files that you can use by, the, by themselves uh, if you want. In addition, you can go to the index.html file, which is basically the browser, and look at it and change it, because it's basically an HTML file. It's very simple to uh, rearrange in, in, many, in, in different ways, put different widgets, get different charts, whichever. There is a library of, char of uh, charts and, and widgets that you can use, including tops for the most usual things, or, or charts for evolution of uh, the most usual parameters, and things like that. So you can mix those and produce the, the, the custom dashboard that you may want once you have the basic information. Uh, so this is just a view of the database. So remember that in the database you have all the media information from the repository. So for instance, this is for tickets. You have for every single ticket, you have everything for it, including all the changes uh, to it, who uh, opened the ticket, who closed the ticket, who are making the different changes, the comments, uh, everything. So basically you have all the information of your project there. Same for Git, same for mailing list, etc. Now let's move to the second part of the talk. So let's assume that you can do that for GitHub, etc. What can you really do with these kind of things? So this is, uh, these are four or five examples of what we have been doing for some of, of the customers of the company. Uh, this is for OpenStack. So the OpenStack does where uh, we are running it and uh, you can see here how the company participation is evolving over time in the Git repositories and in the ticketing system. So here you can have a look at the history of, uh, of OpenStack in terms of which companies are contributing to, to them. So for instance, uh, blue is Rackspace, and then you have Red Hat in uh, green around here. So you can see how one company is taking over the other, but how the evolution in the Git repository is not exactly the same as the evolution as, uh, the, in the ticketing system, so who is actually closing the tickets and so on. So this is for Puppet. For Puppet, uh, they are tracking the IRC channels, and then you can learn things like how it's improving the number of people participating in the uh, IRC channels for Puppet, for instance. So you can see the evolution, and you can also see how, they, how much active they are in the different channels, and so on. So this is for the Theft project, so these are tickets in Theft. These are the different states for the tickets in theft. So tickets in the new state, verified state, in progress state over time. So that you can go to any month in the past and say, okay, at that point we had so much uh, tickets in new state and um, at some point we had so much verified. And you can look for bottlenecks, where is the backlog of your tickets, where they are stopped uh, or things like that. And you can see that over time. And this is for MediaWiki. Uh, this is the mailing lists. So again, you have information about all the aggregated uh, mailing lists for the MediaWiki project, so uh, the traffic in them, but also the number of people posting and the trend. So you can see in this part of the chart, you can see the trend for the last week, for the last month, for the last year, so that you can try to learn whether the, 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 the metrics are going up, down, or to which extent. And you also have things like the top uh, senders, for instance, in this case. And just the last one with respect to the examples, so this is a view of the Linux kernel. This is not done with a JavaScript, this is just R. Then you go there and the, the, the size of each uh, area represents the activity in that area. So here you can learn where the Linux hackers are working the most. And the color represents the number of people involved. So the, the darker, the more people involved uh, uh, in density. So just to uh, finish my presentation, we have several feeder lines. One of the most interesting for us is integrating with other systems. We are involved in several projects and we are working with several customers to integrate this information in uh, other kind of, uh, of, uh, of, of systems like Eclipse, for instance, or Sonar, or, uh, or Forges. So uh, summarizing, um, First of all, uh, we are interested in analyzing free software with free software. 
Uh, I don't have to explain you the benefits uh, that it has. Uh, we have metrics grimoire for extracting the data. We have bridge grimoire for analyzing and visualizing the data. They are really simple to use, at least to, for, to, uh, at the beginner level. And we can incrementally develop a community. So you are welcome to come, share your thoughts, uh, contribute if you want, and make your project uh, open development data, really. Uh, well, many thanks to a lot of people participating. Uh, a bit of uh, marketing staff of the company, skipping it. And, uh, well, I hope this is not the end, really, that you find this interesting and that you want to use and to contribute to Grimoire. So thank you very much. Right. Um, are there any questions for Jesus? We still have a couple minutes. Questions from the audience? No? One? Okay. Is it possible to uh, zoom into the graphs and zoom out to make certain filters, or are they all static visualizations? Uh, right now, right now they're um, dynamic in the sense that they are JavaScript, so you can move from there and see data. If you look there, the, the real thing in the in the net, you can move there and you can see that for each month, for instance, you can see the parameters and so on. But in the end, it's JavaScript, so you can do whatever you may want. Right now, they are static. With time, we are, we are now working in a dynamic API, so that instead of producing a static JSON files, we have an API where you can query and you get on the fly the new JSON file with the information. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Ah, how scalable is your tool? Uh, and uh, For example, can it handle a project where we have uh, several thousands of uh, Git repositories? I'm in a single li uh, Linux distribution. We have a separate Git repo for every package. Uh, can it uh, uh, help us to analyze uh, our activity? Yeah, probably we can. Uh, uh, my, my guess is that the, the, the experience that we have now is in the, in, the, in the hundreds of repositories. So I would say that 500 is no problem at all. And probably several thousands is no problem at all. So remember that once you have the data into it, in the database is not that much data. I mean, oh, from a data point of view. So it's big, but it's not that big. Uh, the main problem usually is the time to retrieve the information. And that depends a lot on the infrastructure on the other side. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions for Jesus? No? Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Jesus Gonzalez Baron, everyone. Thank you for the talk. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next talk will start in five minutes.